Right at it. Right at it. Oh, John and he's Spence. done it again. Just as he did at the John Deere for his first win. Welcome to episode 64 of the Go Get That podcast. It is, it's been a while. We haven't been here <laughs> since the Hero World Challenge, which is about a month ago. So start with that. And then second of all, it's a, it's that time of the year. We are about to turn the calendar to 2023 um, and really get golf season going. You know, we had the fall events, but Jordan never plays well in them anyway. So they're kind of meaningless. And we are here to break down. This was a really, really popular episode last year. We are going to break down the schedule and let you guys know what we think Jordan will be playing in 2023. The events he'll be playing um, should be a little bit easier than last year to pinpoint what he's going to play. Um, I know in my prediction, I have 23 events and 13 of them are like the elevated events that he's going to be required to play. <laughs> so that only leaves um, 10 other events and most of them are just, you know, the events he usually plays that aren't elevated. But, um, yeah, should it should be a fun schedule this year. Uh, a couple new events in there that we aren't used to seeing him play. Yeah, um, another thing just, I mean, to start, sorry for the iPad situation. I um, This was all out, of, out of the blue. Mr. Dan is uh, traveling down south, so we had to get this out of the way. I don't have my computer with me um, with Zoom on it. So we're figuring it out as we go. And another thing is, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, not only just breaking down what we think he's going to play, there's a lot of different uh, things to look at this year. It's a very different schedule, a lot of different requirements. Um, it's it, It'll be interesting. This will be a very different episode than last year's schedule prediction, I feel like, just because a lot of them won't be as straightforward. And a lot of it won't be guessing because we already know that he's going to be playing the elevated events. As Jordan said, that only leaves room for about nine minimum, probably 12 maximum other events on the schedule. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it'll be cur- I'll be interested to see how much we match up because I think there's a decent chance that we all just have the same events on the schedule because uh, the tour makes Weird. it. With these new elevated events, the tour makes it pretty easy for players in sort of the elite category to have the same schedule, which is cool. Um, and something we definitely want to see more of, which is kind of the point of these elevated events. Um, but I do wonder what it'll do to some certain events, uh, like potentially Pebble might be a really weak field, the Byron Nelson, um, just kind of other other events like that mexico open uh john deere uh trying to think of other kind of events that might get screwed by this sort of elite um status for this season at least but um then i think you know also some major predictions in here that's four more quality major courses i think um which is exciting it's weird because it doesn't feel like golf season at all. And yet it's next week that it's going to be starting in a sense, the new year, the new season um, out of Kapalua, but I'm kind of excited actually. I, I think it's uh it's going to be a fun year and an interesting one with all the live stuff going on as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. Um, I've like, obviously my parents know that I do this podcast. They know I run my Instagram account. I'm like telling them like, guys, golf season's about to start. Like football season's, <laughs> I mean, nearing an end. Like I'm excited. Um, selfishly, I'm excited to be able to go away overseas in Europe and get to watch Jordan in prime time. Um, I'm praying he plays well. <laughs> but I'm, yeah, it's, go ahead. I'm very excited to put the football season in the rear view mirror. <laughs> Honestly, right there with you, even as no, no, come on. The Ravens, the Ravens have hope. So do the Pats. I mean, come on. Hope. All right. We're I think right the Dolphins are the least of us all. I think. Pats. No, the Pats. The Pats are worse than the Finns. Uh, yeah. yeah, but yeah, I mean, I guess they have a tougher path than the playoffs. I guess all we need to do is beat one, but still, with Teddy Bridgewater, that's a tough ask. Yeah, I think you collectively we all have like no chance. Yeah. Well, it's very, very the Super Bowl ring. 
It'll be right, Mr. Yeah. Holmes versus Mr. Purdy, I believe. Yeah. I uh do you guys how much of the hero PNC um match did you guys watch out of those three things like how much how much of it did you kind of take in because we didn't talk about any of them really and i'm just curious sort of your thoughts before we i get watched on uh, about none of the hero about none of the match and i watched i watched a good amount of the pnc besides the world cup final i was basically watching the pnc for the rest of it so i um Hero. I saw a lot of good things. I saw a lot of good things at the PNC. I, I won't lie. Even though it's a pitch and putt, but I digress. I digress. But, but still. <laughs> um, PNC. I watched like none. Uh, Hero. I would have watched more had he not been terrible. And the yeah. match, I enjoyed more than I thought I'd enjoyed. Being in prime yeah. time, I got to see mostly all of it. I didn't really care if he won or not, but the match was cool. Yeah. Um, but that again, was- like. I'm selfishly like I don't care unless there's like a prize to winning, whether it be world ranking points or something to his resume. The match does not bolster Jordan Spieth's resume. Yeah, I thought the match was uh kind of fun. Like I I I would have liked more trash talk, but um it is. I think JT talked about it a little bit. Like it's kind of hard because Tiger and Rory have more majors and more just everything. So. Yeah they could just use that as their trash talk line. And it's like, all right, that trumps anything that Spieth and JT have. But um, so I guess that kind of, you know, hit a uh, a wall there. There was, you know, Rory got him on the, I've seen you miss putts shorter with the putter <laughs> instead of a four iron on that one hole from like three feet. Um, so there were some good jabs. I thought the, the golf was like good enough too. Like it wasn't, you know, they weren't birdieing every hole, but they made it so that, you know, if you hit some good shots, you could make some birdies. And Jordan made a couple of them, which made it fun. And, yeah, it was good to see Tiger sort of limping his way around. I mean, not good to see him limping, but, like, good to see him playing golf again. Um, I didn't watch I, – I watched a bit of the hero. PNC was – is what it is. I mean, 20 under is not bad, but – um. You know, just kind of some fun golf leading into more serious, I guess, if you want to call it that. I mean, the Tournament of Champions is the most unserious name on the tour, I think, at this point. Given it's pretty, it's team, pretty but, pathetic. Honestly. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like, it's like, it's so bad. Um, they might as well call it the FedEx Cup finalists. Event. They they might as well call it. Tour Championship Rewind. Yeah. <laughs> which is essentially what it is, plus yeah. a few winners that didn't make the Tour Championship that won, yeah. like, the Bermuda Triangle Tournament uh, or whatever it is. Yeah. It's funny, too. I mean, we'll get into it more, but Camp Smith's, like, the defending champ, and he just <laughs> won't be there. And I think that's that's hilarious. I mean, there's going to be – I mean, Camp Smith won. But they, they, they add – um. They add people who didn't win, but they don't let people who did win back into it. Yeah. I well, yeah, this it's gonna be weird, right? Because Cam Smith has like three of I wanna say the biggest, but like the open's a big deal, obviously. The players is a they try and make it a big deal. It's uh, a big deal, even though we you know well, okay. They try and make it. it they try and make it a, the players major, but no. We know it's it is what it is, but that's like the tours event, and Cam Smith won that. He's gone too, and then this is like supposed to be all the champions from the past year, and Cam Smith won that too, and he's just not here. Um, yeah, but anyway, we'll we'll get to that. At a, <laughs> we can talk a, about that in the preview too. But you want to run this down in chunks? We can just start with. Um, we can go month by month. Yeah. Yeah, we can just start with like the first chunk, which is essentially or just like the winter, the winter into yeah. the spring, into the late spring, into the. So early I, I have him doing in January, um, century. I have him playing Sony, and I don't have him playing the farmers. Yep, same yeah, thing. Century. Be... I'm really hoping he plays Sony. Um, yeah, that one's up in the air, but I just I feel like there's it makes no sense for him to not. Um, yeah, especially with no farmers this year. I don't have farmers. It does not seem like that's going to be happening. Yeah, if he doesn't play Sony, though, I would expect him to play the farmers. Yeah, he, yeah. he better play Sony. 
really wanted to play so <laughs> it does seem like the farmers i think we tried to like cross it off the list last year but then he kind of crossed it himself right like he was sick and just didn't play well and said maybe i don't come back here um so sony makes a lot of sense because i don't think you want to take three weeks off kind of in january and really start building at pebble like i think you he wants to go into pebble with the sense of like or waste management uh whichever one comes first with a sense of like yeah i'm here to win because i know my games in that kind of shape um which you know maybe that's just being the optimist fan that i am but like you don't want to go into pebble off uh, three weeks of of not playing um so my guess is he'd be at Sony as well. And he's played well there before. It's very, like, it fits yeah. some of the courses that he's played well it's at. It's a birdie fest, um, from what I remember. It can be. It's weird. Remember. It's a weird yeah, course. It's, it's a win. It cool. The years yeah. he's played, I remembered it being, oh, but I do remember Thomas once won at, like, 10, so. Yeah. And he's played there four times, and it's been a mixed bag, which is yeah. short and sweet. And Decky a- won this year? Hideki won. We had that uh, three wood. I don't even think I remember watching that. Oh, that was that the three wood? Yeah, the three wood. He had um, somebody somebody had like a five shot lead with ten to play or something, and Hideki erased it, and then. Oh, it was um. I took the early lead in the go get uh, points or something. Brendan Steele maybe. (laughs) No, I thought it was like Penley. I can walk. I could have won. It's one. It's that's a classic for. I think for, it's Russell Henley. It was Henley, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's that's when I took the lead and uh, the go get that that points standing. That will be. I'll run that back this year. I bet. Yeah, we'll we'll have that back starting next week. Absolutely. We have to think of an actual like. Dan, either... you have him, do you have him playing Sony? What's up? Do you have him playing Sony? Yeah. All right, so we're three. I think we should. Sunday. We're, it we're seems in like January. Well, you, we have to come up with some sort of punishment and or prize. It's either last place gets some punishment or first place gets a prize. We have to think of something. Um, right. That's fair. Right. Well, we, we'll, we can let, we'll uh, let the people decide. Yeah. All right. On the Make February, easy, I have been playing uh, pretty standard Pebble, Phoenix, Genesis. Um, no argument there. Yeah, as much as I want to say the Honda, this is not the year. There will be a year where it gets an elevated event, but it's not this year, and he will not be playing it. And it's Phoenix, just... Phoenix is elevated this yeah. year, right? Correct. So he'll be there. Um, and Pebble. yeah, because I know there was some doubt last year, but he'll be there this year. Um, yeah, so that's another good three week stretch yeah. right there. It's fun. I mean, Genesis is a good especially without farmers, Genesis is truly like a good, I think that kind of kicks off a stretch of three weeks of like, how, where's your game at? Right. Cause then likely it kind of segueing into March, we kind of get the Arnold Palmer and then we get the players and he will be at Arnie's event. Cause that's also elevated this year. Um, or is that elevated? In it is. It is. Well, it was elevated, but now it's like a you gotta play it elevated. Okay, so you know it's like a WGC type elevation, um, but not a WGC. So that'll be, it'll be there, and those are three courses that really test your game more than the three that Pebble offers and um, Phoenix. Just different, different challenges, more major championship type challenges um, as we get. Sort of closer no. to the players, and and then of course the masters. I think we're in agreement for the Feb- January and February. I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'll be a theme. Um, February, obviously, you know, with Pebble, Phoenix, and Genesis, all places he's played well at at least one time. So maybe a good chance to snag a win there compared to you know Century and Sony, where I guess he's won at Century, but it's, I mean, I don't know if the three of us will be necessarily confident as we play the Century Tournament of Champions next week. But, yeah, I think, as Dan said, like, February, trying to get his game into shape. Um, it's not like he was playing great in these fall events, and I I definitely have tempered expectations for the January events. We still, ideally, I mean, obviously, ideally, he just wins every event. But realistically, 
the goal is always a win before Augusta. Yeah. Yeah. And it can be tough to build toward that, especially only playing one true fall event um, without these kind of January and February events. So we'll see. I mean, maybe everything just clicks at Pebble and all you have to really beat at Pebble now is Patrick Cantlay. Um, I, mean, I don't know where, I don't know where straight vibing is these days, but I haven't heard much from him. So, um, you know, so you could have a hoagie rerun. Uh, yeah, re I forgot about him. <laughs> Berger hasn't played since the U.S. Open. Wow. Is he what is that? Berger hasn't played since the U.S. Open. Really? I, he seems like such a, I mean. Maybe he's done. He maybe seems like a guy. Maybe, like, maybe just needs to retire. He seems like a guy who. Uh, <laughs> Too much. He seems like a guy who would think about the live offer. Agreed. I'll put it that way. Um, so I'm a little surprised. So maybe he's hurt. I don't know. But I think one, he was hurt, but like one of DJ's boys, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's interesting because when he's playing well, he's I don't want to. He's not fun to watch, but he certainly <laughs> knows how to kind of keep himself. Or relevant on a leaderboard at some tougher courses, but also a place like Pebble. I don't know. I don't know his personality, but yeah, he seems like a guy that would definitely consider, you know, the live tour. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, that's just from me seeing him hang around DJ, but I don't this know. isn't a live podcast, but it's been a while since they've announced any new signings too. So it makes me wonder if something's in the works there. Yeah. I think they're embracing their, their off season right now. Well, yeah. When is their schedule? Like when do they even start playing again? I don't know. I don't know. That's the other thing. The one thing about one more live thing, I just feel like, their information isn't as widespread as it kind of needs to be. Like the fact that we don't know when they their season opens. No, I I I, I got it. I got it. They start um, end of February. Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, that's an off season right there, which is kind of nice. Yeah, for them, I guess. I think PJ Tour is kind of transitioning to that for the. Hey, go. I feel like golf is that top tier players. I but... think we need to rid the fall events for good yeah well i think aren't they they they're making them like the place for the guys who finish outside the top 125 to kind of earn status i think yeah i think that would be good i think we need to replace the players with the zozo <laughs> and <laughs> replace the uh zurich classic of new orleans with the cj cup and we're set i actually like you said players and like I don't know what you're talking about there, but the moving the Zurich to the Zozo, I like that idea. I, I just I think that, I just think that the Zozo and the uh, CJ Cup are both like they should be main events. Yeah, the, Maybe, the per but and right before Mexico would be perfect, like a little foreign swing. Um the problem with like putting the CJ Cup where the Zurich currently is, it's a, it's another like must play event, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Like it's there's like a lot of guys use Zurich as like a break week, which if you put another real event in, that's another week that they can't take off. Well, I mean, we've talked about reordering kind of that stretch from the Masters to the PGA, because I think the events, the RBC that is right after the Masters and the Wells Fargo that's right before the PGA or no, the week, two weeks before the PGA. I think those are events that guys want to play, but they're the way they're spaced, especially right after the Masters, just doesn't make a lot of sense for them to play both. Um, so that'll be something that's um, I'll be kind of curious to look at as they kind of make their schedules going forward. Um, yeah, so that doesn't change much going into March, right? Like I think it's no, um, March I have API players match play. And then I have Valero, but of my 23 events, I think Valero is the one that is most up in the air. I think he plays it, but I have I put question marks towards it just because I don't think it's a guarantee. Maybe it is a guarantee. I don't know. 
Um, but... Where's um? So it, it's Honda, which is in late February, and then API and players, which he will be at. Um, and then Valspar right after. Valspar, yeah, don't see him so that's there. That's a skip, unfortunately. Valspar yeah. is a good tournament too. It's a good course. Obviously, he's won there. That that, that'll, that'll, that'll be another year, one. I think. Yeah, like that'll be another one that like, gets an elevated event at yeah. some point. Yeah. I don't think there's going to be anyone there this year because everyone has to play API. Yeah, I don't think that will be a big, uh, big one either. That'll be like a Sam Burns Sung JM week. The people who play like literally every event, so especially, <laughs> especially the with the match play right after because isn't yeah. that also an elevated event? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm thinking, um. For March, Arnold Palmer players, yeah, it's straightforward. Like, it's not hard to pick this out, um, so far at least, for sure. And I'm kind of leading into April now as we get, you know, yeah, and the majors. Yeah, if you want to do that for stretch, I think we are in agreement just, with that too. Yeah, just a theory. Like, I put question marks next to Valero, and the one thing, I think he plays it, don't get me wrong. But the RBC Heritage would be the fourth week out of a four-week stretch, and maybe, just maybe, he wants to try and defend that title and doesn't want to play it as the fourth week. And it's just a theory here. Because if if he does play Valero, then I'm fully confident he plays all 23 events that I have picked out. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll I, I, have to see. The thing is, well, it's a good point because the RBC is an elevated event this year, right? Yeah. And so it's a big deal. Champion. It would be a big deal to defend. Um, just winning that tournament in general is going to be a big deal to whoever wins it. Uh, the thing about, I just he hasn't ever skipped a spring Texas event. I feel like, and with the Valero being in Texas and right before the Masters, I. It's not like he needs to go to Augusta three days early to figure out where he's going to hit the ball. I mean, maybe on 13, but I, like I, I would think he plays Valero, but you make a good point, a couple good points as to why he might think about not showing up. And if he I, wasn't, yeah. if he wasn't a Texas kid, he would not be at Valero. That's very fair, but he is a Texas kid. But he is. Well, he has to play Valero. Um, he just won it. I feel like he has yeah, yeah that's... I wonder if he hadn't have won it if he would be there. But like those are just stupid. Yeah, he would. And and I, what you were saying, like, there's no chance he skips the RBC heritage. No, it's an elevated and he's developed. Oh, it is. Yeah. 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 So that's a pretty straightforward stretch again. Match play, Valero, Masters, RBC heritage. I love that stretch. Again, I think of all those courses. Um, RBC actually fits in the worst. Like I've never seen that course as one that I'm like, okay, let's go play. Like he just won last year and it was great. But um, I think like in theory, it kind of fit. Like it's a lot of wedges and you don't have to. Well, the greens don't fit him at all, but he won without the putter. So oh, yeah, I guess that's kind of the, fits your point, right? Like he, he putted terribly and he still won. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's right. Actually, you mentioned this being like one of your, is it your favorite stretch? I mean, it's the Masters, yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's I, got my it's got my favorite tournament of the year, my favorite major of the year, and tied for favorite non-major of the year. So, okay. yeah. yeah. I think then the – And two, and, the, and the two tournaments he's most recently won. So, yeah, I mean, no-brainer. Yeah. I mean, I, lo I love the Memorial U.S. Open Traveler stretch too, but – um, and I love the West Coast – uh, swing too, but I mean, <laughs> you love every stretch. You just love it all. You love it all. <laughs> just... I, I mean, I I don't love the 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 fall stretch. I'll well, say okay, I mean, but that nobody loves the fall. If if all of if Spieth only played fall events, he would be on the web dot com tour right now. <laughs> Could be. I can't. Uh, <laughs> with that. The... I don't think he's has he ever even, like what's his like his his like. He has a T9 at Nine Bridges. I don't think he's <laughs> ever placed higher than T9 in the fall event in his career. I mean, he won the Australian Open, if yeah. you can count that. That's, a, that's not a fall. That's, a, that's like Probably. late, early December. And it's kind of Mickey. And it's kind of Mickey. I mean, I'd love to see him play it again. Me too, but 
But yeah, you're right. I don't see it happening. Right. The only reason uh, I asked about your favorite is because I think the next stretch is mine. You like the next stretch? I love it, the next stretch. Great. Hey, uh, the ranch. Yeah, there's so many bad stretches. We started. I, mean, I know you love ranch, but I mean, Mr. Ranch <laughs> deserves a major, and so he's well. First of all, he's playing Wells Fargo. Yep. And this... and he put it just great. It's all good, yeah. So it'll be Wells Fargo, Nelson, PJ Championship, Charles Schwab, Schwab then the Memorial. Memorial. Yeah, that's that's his longest stretch of the year. I love that stretch, and that's the only five week stretch he has. I'm kind of excited about the Wells Fargo because that's new. I and very much am because I, I, am, I yeah. see the well on greens besides Wells Fargo in the last year and a half. <laughs> um, he actually he played well. That was at the Presidents Cup too, so that's yeah. cool. Um, I mean, I love Craig Ranch. I think I've discussed that. I mean, the, it's top. It's a top course. <laughs> the PG, it's top tier. The PGA. I think they should bring. The Byron Nelson to Oak Hill and put the PJ Championship at Craig Ranch. Yeah, that would be a good just like last minute swap. Yeah, no, and and the PGA is obviously exciting because that's just the tournament that he needs to win. Um, and I, I kind of I will I feel like I like the PGA courses and the coverage and just kind of the whole week of the PGA is a lot of fun. The Masters feels yeah. like. It's fun and it's it's like majestic and the PGA is just like really cool. Like it's just <laughs> just it's just a good good quality golf week and Oak Hill is awesome. Um, so I think that will be a great week. And then I love Colonial is sick, and the Memorial is also sick. I just that five weeks right there, um, I will be enjoying thoroughly. To say there, that. I I could make an appearance at the Memorial. It's possible. I haven't really thought about it yet. Yeah. But <laughs> no, I, I'm. I definitely have to go at some point. I can't go this year, but we'll we'll make sure we all go one year. Uh, we'll figure that out. That'd be great. Do you sick. think? We, uh, okay, on the spot, will Tiger be there? At the Memorial. Mm-hmm. No, I say no. Yeah. I'm gonna go with. If he plays both of the majors without like showing significant pain, I think he does. <laughs> the criteria. Yeah. If oh man, if he like has a limp by day three at the Masters, yeah. So. If okay. if he has a limp by day three at the Masters, he might not even play the PGA. Right. My yeah, no, my actually... quick Tiger schedule. Genesis players for majors. That's my opinion. Wow. So you think he plays six? Yeah. Hmm. Wait, what did you say? Genesis, gonna... Genesis players for majors. Yeah. I... And the JP McManus. Yes. I don't I I'll, I'll be honest. I'll be very, very honest. I don't think he plays Genesis. You don't yeah. think he's gonna play his own event? I, I don't think I, – I mean, I he's got so many – I I think his mind is going to be set on just getting back to the Masters. Like, I think that's what he's thinking about. Because he's still not healthy. I mean, you saw him at the last two events. Like, yeah. he's not – Also, like, Genesis is what? Two months. Two months. So, it's yeah, not a month week. and a half. We'll see. It's possible, but I – That'd be cool. That'd be fun. It depends how he recovers, obviously. It, it's a miscut. Hey, hey, take it easy. Oh, dude, he's hitting it the best he's ever hit it. He just can't walk right now. Just take right. a cart, man. Just take a cart. No, I lose all. It's incredible. Him. Like, obviously, he's number one or two all time, wherever you have him. Has nothing to prove. Everyone wants him to take a cart. Every fan wants him to take a cart. But this dude is he's so stuck won. up and, like, he's the golf won. is played this way. I will not I take respect, a cart. I respect the hell out of him. Yeah. And then you have like John Daly, who's like, I will not play without a car. <laughs> I mean, it shows the difference in breeds. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, that's it's great. All right, June. So we're in June. Uh, Memorial end of that five week stretch. U.S. Open Travelers. Does he, is Travelers elevated? Yes. Okay, I low key think if Travelers wasn't elevated, he wouldn't play. I agree. 
hundred percent. Just because it's freaking the U.S. opens in California, yeah. U.S. opens in California, and then Travelers is across the country. Yeah, but I, I'm glad he'll be there. That would be fun. Are you going, yeah. Bob? Oh yeah, for sure. They're like sixty buck tickets. Oh, okay, that's worth it. That's so worth so it. Nice, Cause everybody's gonna be there. Yeah. So that that'll be that'll be awesome. <laughs> um. True. So then, so then, across the pond. Right? My favorite yeah. stretch. You guys went through your two favorites. No John Deere, but JP McManus, the Scottish, and then the Open. Yeah. Um. I live for these two two weeks. Honestly. I think I the John not. I think the John Deere's in play. No, no it's not. Let's move on. I'll, I'll, but, I'll bring yeah. back that take. It's just not. <laughs> it's not. If it gets an elevated event, which I think it's got to just get moved, man. Like, that's, it's do you think John Deere ever gets an elevated event? If it yeah. moves around in the schedule, no, it, it would be so. I think fun. it has to. Does every tournament have to at least once, like in like ten years? So. In the spring, in the in the in the from the I don't think the fall events because they're. Um, therefore the like qualifying for status for the next year. But I think the spring events will rotate. So the John Deere is gonna get all those guys are going to Silvis, Illinois at some point. Like spring or summer, because 2027. Technically the John Deere. Obviously, obviously I'm joking now, but I was so confident he was gonna play the John Deere last year. Well, until his I was like, well, he doesn't he doesn't have to play great in Scottish, so he can just go over there on Tuesday and yeah. I, I don't well, know. He was, he was one back with with five to play at the Scottish this year. That's crazy. I totally that was a ridiculous that. par three performance. I've never. I mean, he was missing <laughs> greens by forty five yards. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. But no, I, that's, I, the Scottish was so much fun. Yeah, that it was, was like it was fun. close to winning there. He was never really close to winning at St Andrews. Yeah, no, twenty eight. The Open posted like an every shot of his on YouTube. And I watched like the first four holes and then he three putted the par five. And I'm like, yeah. I, I can't, I'm done. I don't want to relive the, the count up the like nine shots that he left out there that would have beat Cam Smith. <laughs> in, in typical speed fashion, he was out of the open after round one. Yeah. And I, I don't know if we'll get into like some goals and stuff later, uh, yeah. but I know Jordan posts his on um, this Jordan. Our our podcast Jordan post. I'll have, I'll, I'll have so. Do you have um your goals from last season that you would like to share after we're done? Me, I do. He didn't do very well. There's a lot of red X's. <laughs> there shot. was a lot of red. Yeah. Figure, don't tell me there was something in oh. there about shots game putting over. Oh. <laughs> um, well, we're almost done with because after the open, it's like Detroit. Wyndham and uh, Minnesota. So he won't be at any of those. And then the playoffs, he'll be at all three. Well, actually, Dan, if he needs points to get into the playoffs, he could be at the Wyndham. Yeah, but other than that, I think we're in complete and total agreement. If yeah. He, if he needs points to make the playoffs, I mean, come on. What are we doing? What a like, disaster. <laughs> these podcasts will be something totally different at that point. Um, I just want. I just want the butts to fall, man. Yeah. And they have kind of been. There's nothing, there's just nothing better, you know? Yeah, it does feel. Uh, like, wasn't the Presence Cup so good? Like, it was so fun. Yeah. Yeah. He did dominate. I, I, I put out that um tweet about what happens to guys who went 5-0 and in um, team competition, like, the year after what they did. And it's not that great. Like nobody, <laughs> there's no major winners. There's That's no good. nice. Um, nobody really won more than twice, and that was. That's also like a trend. Like that, that I feel like that's not really a trend. That's direct. That I don't feel like that's causation. Well, no, and I I think the the other thing I kind of looked at was that year, like Francesca Molinari won five and zero, oh, and he won in the Open that year. So I think for a lot of guys, it was a capping, like people, it wasn't a stepping stone. It was just like a, the final, it was a cherry on top for a great season. So, 
We'll see. I mean, so for Spieth, it was a cherry on top of an average. Well, or it'll be a, or in theory, it'll be a stepping stone. Would you consider, okay, with the singles win, would you consider last year a complete failure? No. No. Without the singles win, it wasn't a complete failure. A it complete was failure though. Not winning. It wasn't great, dude. I mean, it was. It was not great at all. I think yeah, complete failure is tough, but it was yeah, very. Poor. I think just. The I mean, to get a win. I mean, to get a win with. Yeah, I mean, with nothing. I mean, he really pulled one out of his behind. But I mean, at the same time. Well, he should have won Pebble. I feel like he should have won at least one of. Um, uh, the 218. Byron or Pebble. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I feel too, like he deserved both of those. Like, and he won the one that he didn't deserve at all. Right. And there might be something to be said about altering expectations for what his season should and can look like because I don't know. He's like a he's like the fifteenth to twentieth best player in the yeah, world. That's like fair. Kind of what he's playing at, and the fifteenth to twentieth best player in the world wins one time a year. Like, yeah, like right before we started podcasting, I was outside taking a walk. I was walking my dog and I'm thinking to myself, like, what am I going to say on this podcast? And I'm going to say, like, my expectations, like, I'm thinking, what events is he going to win on the schedule that we're about to talk about? And I'm thinking, like, one win, which is for him, a guy that won five times in 2015. Like, that's he is who he is right now until he proves us differently. You can't expect a three win. Like, you can't say if the putting happens. That he's and just I, I hate to say this, but and this feels like I'm really settering, settling because he does have the talent to be an all time great, and he already is in some sense. Yeah. But if you would not take one win a year for the rest of your career, I mean that's that's crazy. You you have to take that. Um, right. Yeah. There's no. I mean, DJ that. DJ made a living on winning one time a year or maybe two yeah no dj is one of i don't you know he's one of the uh best and you'll have crazy of this generation because he won one time a year yeah but like you just can't expect in today's day and age to win three times a year right well i think now like three wins a season is a career year just with oh. the amount of talent like scotty Scheffler winning four times last year was absurd cam smith ridiculous like um the events cam won too yeah like those Same and i mean even scotty right like he has yeah. scotty's got he has his major scotty may never win another major you just might not it's, it's, it, dude there are so many people that may never win another um major speed yeah. one of them right no you <laughs> sure and i mean what data golf has him as like the 32nd best player right now yeah. Granted, he hasn't played a ton and it was the playoffs and the CJ Cup, but like that kind of tells you he's not like, I don't know. It's not like he's playing what he had like maybe four good weeks last year. Speed? Yeah. He almost made it. was a good week. Yep. Yeah, Pebble, Byron, Byron Austin, was a week. RBC. I mean, it's tough to, yeah, RBC is a good week for sure. And Scottish. Scottish was a good week. Scottish um, was good. I, I think after the Scottish, we were disappointed, but we also knew it was good prep for the Open. I, so. I mean, I stand by Pebble being the best. Well, and the Scottish the Scottish was – um, I thought the Scottish was a better week than the Open. Just the Open was just pure disappointment. The but, Open was just, like, non-competitive. And granted, the Scottish wasn't overly competitive. He was competitive for two holes, but – it was the last – it was the back nine on Sunday that he was competitive for two holes. So, I don't know. You know, I think – we'll see. But I guess that kind of leads in to win prediction. If you had to guess how many wins this season, where are you going for? Um, I'll go first. I'll go one. Okay. Um. Again, it's up. It's up to him to prove me and us differently. Um. 
like we'll joke around he's winning the masters by eight but he very well could but at the same time like <laughs> it's like downright pathetic that i mean like in these fall events the last three four five years that i've been tracking he's got no chance going in like i have no confidence like an elite yeah. player is just not like that so it's up to him yeah, to get back. Feels- go ahead i was just gonna say it feels like he's out of a lot of tournaments before on thursday they yeah. really get going yeah and that just kind of sucks you know yeah so um i'll go one win i'll say the schwab i'll play it safe okay. there um i was, I was leaning... gonna say... go ahead what finish finish so i was gonna say the schwab um i was looking at the you know the nine events before uh he ain't gonna win in hawaii Pebble's fair. I just don't think he'll win that early. Um, and I just I'm playing it safe with the Schwab where he can be in contention. He just he knows that course too well. I'll go one as well. And I'm gonna go Craig Ranch, Byron Nelson. Come on. He's he's bagging it this time. No way KH Lee takes <laughs> another Byron Nelson. Um but we'll see. He is the king of Craig Ranch, so uh no, I just think Byron Nelson's a good spot. I feel like it's a place that he'll be in contention at going forward. So um, he's two for two on top tens there. So he'll be a good chance for a win there. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, I, hope you know I don't want to copy Jordan, but go ahead. I mean, like, it's the sad truth. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my brain wants to say zero just because I don't want to expect him to win until I see something, right? But at the same time, like, you found a way to win last year. And I mean, that was a pretty disappointing year But besides the win. Uh, so I'm going to go with one at the Schwab as well. Yeah, like, he's, again, like, we're complaining that he's not the elite player that he was. He can obviously get back there. But at the same time, he's good enough to put him in the picture at at least, like, five – or so at a minimum events to at least put himself in the picture. Well, yeah, and he can win. I th- he can win anywhere. Like his his best stuff, he could win at any golf course. He is not going to have a chance at the LACC. It, I, if he had his best stuff, he could. I mean, maybe I because I elite. It, I think elite golfers that can win anywhere. It doesn't matter. That's if fair. If That's they're fair. playing their best, like it just doesn't doesn't matter. But well, LACC is not a good setup to sort of <laughs> draw the his elite stuff out of him. Yeah, that could be it. I think like any so, US Open going forward is just Yeah. I mean, well, I mean LACC, right? Like big greens, kind of wider. So it's, it's a big ballpark, right? I yeah, I mean we don't have the scorecard. Yeah, and it should I be, assume it'll be it, massive. It should be firing because it Los Angeles in, in the middle of June. So are you saying you're getting just a little bit of Chambers Bay vibes? I'm not saying it, but I'm saying it. I mean, compared to like other US Open venues we've seen, like Yeah. Well it, it's a funny thing. I feel like we keep talking. And, you know, I do it a ton. It's just like I talk myself into the course being a good fit for any player, <laughs> regardless of just like, especially when they're elite. Just I like, mean, you can find a a way to fit it to basically any player that's got any. Who's, like, who's got some sort of game. Yeah. But I don't know. Do we want to transition into the majors? Um, I'm fine with that. Cool. I, I, I've got a little, a little I'm like. Going- Last, I'm going last. Okay, I got a little tweak to this. I also give your winner and then say um, where you think Spieth will finish as well. Okay, yes, sir. I'm going with that. Yes, I'll sir. Start with Augusta. Um, man, I just something. Part of me really wants to pick Cam Smith. Oh, that would but, be. I think he's on a heater, and that would be something. Because <laughs> he did just win the Australian Open as well. But I do worry that heaters kind of run out. Um, 
And that that water ball on 12 on Sunday has to be living in his head somewhere. So at that rate, I don't know. I've got three. I've got I've got a couple guys going through my head right now. So you might go ahead, Jordan. I wish okay. I, had, I wish I had an answer. All right. Just because I uh I was seeing if it was available. I'm sorry for going off topic here, but I did find the setup for the U.S. Open at LACC. Mm. Oh, it'll be a par seventy at seventy three hundred eighty one yards. So it's going to be that's feisty big, and mean. That's massive. I mean, just listen to this, and then we'll get in my master's pick. The final three holes, par uh, 16th hole is a par four at 542 yards, 17 a par four at 520, and then 18 a par four at 492. So, nice. Wow. <laughs> so I see a uh, bogey, bogey, bogey for speed. But anyway, into my master's. That screams just kept good to me. Anyway. That'd be interesting. All right, so master's pick, I have Rom. Um, Spaniards at Augusta. Just Rom is going to win a master's at some point, as long as he doesn't go to live because i think that would lower his chances of playing in more masters uh rom at augusta and spieth will top 10 but not really have a chance okay i'm gonna go mr mcelroy it's time if he doesn't get it done this year when's he gonna get it done bob is sad like, no, nah, I'm going with a really dark horse pick because it really doesn't fit. It, the course fit isn't really there at all. But I've been I've been having this guy in the back of my mind for like six months, and I'm just Kevin going. Kisser. Sorry, Corey Connors. I wish, um, but I'm going with Victor Hovland. Ooh. Ooh. And I know that he's going to need to clean up around the greens, but I've already yeah. seen some improvement there. Um, I just think I, I don't know. I, I I don't have a reason. I just that's my pick. You know, that's not a bad selection because I mean, it, it's just about as bad as the course fits you'd be fine but yeah. but guys and with my pick yeah guys who win majors have typically at least in, in what i've seen have typically kind of like shown up at majors kind of their name popped on a leaderboard occasionally in majors before they won and hovland was in it last year at uh st yeah. andrews so We'll see. I don't know if the Masters is the spot for him, but I think he's he's getting ready to kind of break through into his sort of um, I don't know. major territory, major win. So, absolutely. I also, I I will go speed T twelve at Augusta because I forgot to mention that earlier. But I don't know. I don't really know. Well. If he's not in contention at some of these majors going into the weekend, that'll just be disappointing. But that's, you know, like we said, the expectations, I think, have to be altered in a sense this going into this year. At least mine are. Like, they're, yeah. they're slightly lower. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm there. Yeah. Oak, yeah. Oak Hill. I'm so excited to watch this. I, I mean, I... Just love the PGA. Makes me smile. Makes me happy. I wish it was that. If it was that Craig Ranch, like, <laughs> that, be, that might be the greatest week of my life if it was that Craig Ranch. But <laughs> the PGA, I know, I know Bob didn't like Southern Hills, but I thought Southern Hills and Kiowa the last two years have been really entertaining. Yeah. I, I didn't like Southern Hills, but I did love Kiowa. I mean, how can you not? Yeah. Kiowa was sick. Oak Hill, Oak Hill will be good. I promise. It was good. I like um, New York golf courses, but yeah. Something I have a slight feeling about Shoffley. And I know that he is not a killer still. I still I still will claim that. Nah, he's he's he's, he's fine now. He's won like four but, times. Yeah, but he's in, in majors, he's always kind of bottle it but i think oak hill gives him a good shot to kind of get over that hump it seems like a very um if kepka was like if he still kind of cared about golf <laughs> or they showed me that he cared about golf this would be a kepka course um but i'll go i'll go shoffley fair enough Speed uh, e28 not relevant at this um point, personally. 
Okay. For Oak Hill, I'm going to go with Speed. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I promise you this year will not be the completion of the Grand Slam. But um, I am going to go with Cam Young. Ooh, that's a solid pick. He really fits the PGA persona. And he the screams the, like the guy who would have his first win be a coming out party in a major. Yeah, in New that's York. Out. And it's just, I mean, he plays those tough, fast, firm courses so well. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's a fantastic pick because – how many times last year at the PGA did you hear that he's from New York and he's the son of a PGA professional, right? Like, so Oak Hill in New York, PGA championship, son of a PGA professional. He was lurking at majors last year too. So he'll, uh, he's definitely sort of somebody that could and probably will break through at some point at, at one of these events. Yeah. So I'm last. Yeah. I agree with Dan. I think Xander Ooh. wins the PGA. Wow. Uh, he's going to win one at some point. I yeah, he will. Fine. But, like, at the same time, like, we say that in our luck. So, That's wow. true. That's true. I actually, when I was making my major picks, I was trying to figure out some dark horses, but I just didn't feel like going down that I have a, at all. I have a huge dark horse take, and it pains me to say because I really like the guy. But yeah, uh, Z- I, what? Xander's in Xander's in form. He plays pretty yeah. big golf course as well. Yeah. That's what I got there. And Speeth will be Speeth will not be in the picture. He'll be hot. You know, he'll be playing well after a T two at the Zurich as well with Cantlay. So you already know Xander will be ready to go in kind of that May stretch. Um, I, I I think there's a better chance of someone winning all four majors this year than Speeth winning at the PGA. Personally, no offense to Spieth. That's 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 that's. Wild. I don't see this PGA course being a Jordan Speed type of fit. I don't think it is either. But all four. That's he, he needs. needs to, what he needs are to you do, overreacting a bit? I feel I'm like. not. I'm not. I, I like. I look at the schedule of PGA venues. I think this is like got to be the worst one. Yeah, like Frisco like, is like he sh- he should be playing PGA Frisco like every day for the rest of his life. Yeah, Frisco is his <laughs> one chance to win that. Yeah, well, I think like of course like Olympic Club, he could have a decent chance too with how tiny those greens are. Yeah, and it's gonna go back to Quail Hollow in twenty twenty five. So like, I mean, there's venues, but Mister Hill, I do not believe will be a good one for him. Yeah, I have a I have huge major take that I want to come to you guys with. Okay, Let's I want to hear it. I do not think. Mr. Zalatoris wins one Ooh. because yeah. I think this injury is going to hurt him a lot. Yeah. Well, it's a back, back injury, right? Yeah, back injury is something that some people do not return from to full form. And he already sort of had some Ricky vibes in there. Um, I see. If he... I feel like just the way that it would have to go for him to get back to the top, he'd have to spend a, he'd have to fix his putting. And I think to do that, he'd have to I mean he already has a swing club for however long. I think it's gonna take so much more time to build that swing back that I just don't think the putting is ever good. I mean he could get hot when we can, but I don't think he's ever gonna be a consistent putter to the point where he should win one. Well, some thoughts on his putting, right? He putted really, really well at the PGA and the U.S. Open last year. Well, he does have some clutch, Gene. I'll give him that. Right. Yeah, no, he's got some. He's got some cojones about him. Um, but some would say Ricky had some of that too. Yeah, Ricky. Like I don't. Ricky didn't bottle f- all these majors. No, he was there. I, would yeah. you say Zal Torres has bottled the major? I think he's no. just no he's just outplayed. I I actually love the Ricky comparison from Bob. He's just got unlucky. He should easily have it. Probably one, yeah, maybe two or three. I mean, and Zal Torres, just real quick on his putting, like he's not a good putter outside of the majors. So I kind of worry a little bit that it might regress to the mean at some point during those majors, which is 
not ideal, right? Because if you, you know, you're not going to win a major losing strokes on the field putting. You're just not. Some just so, be playing better than that. So, um, just so we're being fair here, Zalatoris was a better putter than Spieth last year. Well, I, I'm that's I'm not comparing him to Speed though. I'm just saying in general. Compared I know, to I know, his, but compared to his like regular event average, he, I mean, he was absurd at the majors on the greens. I mean, his he top did. three putting performances were all at majors. That's yeah, incredible. that's ridiculous. That's just not going to happen again. Um, that's true. But I don't know. Why don't you get us started for LACC, Jordan? Um, I have I, I'm gonna bet that one of you guys have him too. Max Homa, Ooh. I love this pick. This is like a, I think I'm gonna put money on it type of pick. Wow. He is from LA. He plays well at hard golf courses, and I mean we say it as we as Bob has alluded to. We say it for a lot of guys, but I think it maybe is his time to win a major. He is. I mean he's pre- he's like went up this ascent in golf. Like he won a crappy event, then he won the Genesis, then he made the President's Cup team. He's what's, he's what's the last step? Major. Exactly. You think, so at least. I mean it's hometown. I assume he's played this course quite a bit. Not that, that means a whole lot. I guess it can, but <laughs> I think he's a good pick for the US Open. Mm. I like that. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I'm gonna oh, go... I gotta say where Speeth finishes first. Mm. We will go with a the the uh, par is a 70. We'll go 73, 75 to have a weekend off. <laughs> I'd say there's a better chance Mr. Woods completes the career grand um completes a, a full grand slam than speed wins at LA Country Club. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I, I'm going to go with a no name. I don't have a name for you, but we're so due. Yeah. For a no name to win a major, I think it's going to be literally someone in the like 200 to ones. Um, well, it, should have been, it should have been Mito Pereira last year. But... It should have been. I just, I like, um, it's a very new course. It fits young guys. It's, it's very modern. Um, so yeah, I think, I think some really no name is going to win at LA. Yeah. I'll, I'll Maybe... give you, I'll go with, um, I will go – come back to me. I'm trying to think of I actually have a name, and then you can throw out your name when you remember him. Here's my name. I have Homa, but if I had to throw out, like, a under-the-radar name that will win the U.S. Open, Sebastian Munoz. Mm. He's a that's, bomber. That's just a name right there. Like, he's one of those dudes. <laughs> that's like the exact him. type of person I'm thinking. <laughs> he hits it far. He's been a first-round leader. Like, he's the type of dude that will go out. He's just a name. I'll That's give you great. one. Cameron Davis. Oh. That's, yeah. That'd That's be so, so classic for Cam Davis to freaking go win a major after Spieth beat him bad at the President's yeah, Cup. Speed the President's Cup. Spieth walks on no majors, but Cam Davis gets the major. Speaking of... I, I Another one I'll throw out there is Adam Spencer. Spencer? Okay. That's a name. That, that's I like that. Spencer's a baller. He is. He, he was there at uh, Detroit for a while, I'm pretty sure. So I know, know Elise, I know Elise had been betting him all year. He was in the two hundred to once all the way up until um he's Canadian, he, huh? Yeah. Huh. So he would have Weir. To be, Mike Weir is the only Canadian. He'd be the show. first Canadian since Weir, right? He'd have to be. I think we're the only. <laughs> that would make. Wait till wait till Mackenzie Hughes wins a couple this year, and then we'll no Mackenzie reevaluate. Mackenzie Hughes will never have a career. So I've got a, a couple names. Didn't Mackenzie Hughes choke it to Spencer? Where? When Spencer won. Spencer won. Yes, he won like the RSM or something. Oh. Uh. Ah, oh, you're right. Maybe. I don't know what tournament it was though. I it was the RSM. Mackenzie it was the RSM. It was. Yeah, I think Hughes choked it. Like Canadian, Canadian uh, choked. Let me see. 
No, Hughes didn't even make the cut. Oh, well, yeah, he choked it in that choked sense. Some event. I guarantee, I promise you, he choked some event recently. Brian he Hartman was, came up too. He was at um, the, the U.S. Open at Torrey Pines, I think. Yes. Hughes was relevant. That, Very yeah. Relevant. And then he hit it into a tree. I, I mean, I remember that, but that's not the one I'm thinking of for sure. Oh, okay. Hmm. I'm thinking it well, sounds familiar. We can come back to it. Yeah, I don't remember Mackenzie Hughes. But um, LACC, I just started, you know, you guys talking about uh, names started to jog my mind. So Sleeper, Camp Champ, could be a spot for him. Uh, I know Big Johnny, Big Johnny W loves to hear that. Uh, Tony, Tony Fino could be a spot for him. But I think in the end, I don't think next year is a female year. Person, no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I, I think, think he had his hot streak. Like, I but think I think he'll continue be, to be very good. I think he'll win. I think good. LACC will be a spot that he could, um, really sort of just establish himself on the leaderboard from day one. Like I post a 68 six i mean who knows how it's going to play 68 67 and you just see the name Finau on the first page all week um but i'm going to go with dustin johnson oh and this would be chaotic wouldn't it wait if, so are you you didn't go cam smith but you almost just predicted two out of three live guys winning the majors yeah <laughs> wait so who's your who's your pick for la dustin johnson it's a good pick he's been playing so well if, dude, if he's if he's playing the way he's capable of playing. What he's doing in, in live is like what PSG does in me. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> he beat Joaquin Neiman in a playoff at Boston. Oh, man. He's pretty good. No, I, I, I just – yeah. it could I, be a Dustin Johnson spot, man. Just step up, bomb it. Like, I like that pick because, like, he has been still playing. Like, Cam Smith kind of fell off after the Open. Yeah. And like, we'll see about um it could be a spot for Rom too. I mean US opens in general, but LACC just seems like a Rom type of beat place. I would say I just love Kepka and Majors. I would say Kepka, but I have no faith that his game will be anywhere near where it needs to be, or his body will be anywhere near weird. Yeah, it's sad because I want Kepka to be a It'd be cool if Kepka won like eight majors. Like that'd just yeah. be fun to watch, fun to witness. But he's he's such he's the, he's such a killer down the stretch, too. It's so sick to watch. Yeah. But yeah. Um, it's, which makes it even more crazy that Phil beat him at Kiowa. That was Phil like, might have like, killed Phil might have killed Brooks. It's not like Phil took down Brooks may never win again, if you think about it. Like, he may yeah. never win again major again and besides major he probably won't unless they let the guys back on the tour which isn't very p- probable it's not like that phil is... took down like i don't know munoz no, he down it was a very respectable win on that golf course yeah he took I mean, down it's, the great, it's the greatest one of all time by yep. all. correct yeah, i think it has to be the goat win i mean he took down the greatest major champion of the era Coming in with no form, and he hasn't won anything or been close to winning anything since, and his life has taken a complete 180. At a course, <laughs> probably fit 95% of the field better than it did. Yeah, you can make that case. At 50 years old. You can just keep piling things on. He was 320 to 1. Yeah. I mean, it's the greatest one of all time. Which is why I'm picking Phil to win the Open. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually going. Where is the open? Liverpool. Royal Liverpool. I am going Victor Hovland. So two both of you have Hovland winning a major. Different. Okay. Major. I really I, I really don't like Hovland the open. I feel like that was really fluke. Uh, At St. Andrews? I don't know. He's a flusher, man. I mean, but like you have to be so creative. At the open around the greens, and I know that you do it the masters too, but at the masters, like you don't have to putt from 50 yards off the green, like it's just it's a different. Well, it's, but I think that's what made him better though was that St. Andrews, he could just putt everything, he didn't have to chip. 
And I think A B, but at Royal Liverpool, I feel like you lost chip. Okay. We'll see. I think I, I don't know Royal Liverpool very well. So. Yeah, me neither. But uh I also kind of like Fleetwood. We'll see. Yeah. He's not I he just doesn't close the door enough, but that dude just flushes the ball. I really hope the open this year is like just chaos weather wise. I don't think I it want to see chaos this year as much as possible. Make Pebble like super windy. Make make Valero yeah, at like seven under. Come on. <laughs> so Royal Liverpool, if there's one thing you should know about it, you should know who won there in 2014. Rory. Rory. And that's who I have winning it this year. Mm-hmm. Um Rory won in 2014 at 17 under. Um I if the course can play as easy as 17 under, I really don't know how hard it can get. Um, because it's not like you're gonna have 17 under and then five under. Like I don't think there's many courses that can do that besides maybe in Augusta. I don't know if Royal Liverpool is capable, especially because in 2014 it paid it played to 7,300 yards par 72, which is short. But mm-hmm. um, so I talk about this with Spieth a lot, like numbers, like what number is a good winning number for him? And I say like 11 or 12. He won at 17. I think St. Andrews. What Cam Smith? What did Cam Smith win it again? 20. He won at 20. I think 20 might be a little too much for Rory, but 17. And to win at Royal Liverpool twice and to break a drought that has lasted eight years makes sense. It'll be nine at that point. It'll be nine years. And I think he will take the last major of 2023 to end the drought. Um, I wonder if he'll still be number one in the world at that point. That's a good question. Yeah, but... the OWGR is new and interesting. That'll be something I'm kind of... See how it shakes once, out? Once, once events really start going in there to kind of see like how much people move like what because the majors are going to be massive because they're the they have a larger gap now as to how important or how valuable they are in terms of wins so um because all the other wins will be more like 50 a, a really really good event will now be like 60 points tops where in the past it could have been 80 or 85 so winning a major is a big deal for your OWGR, which yep. makes sense to me. It should be like that. All right, this is a little off topic, but I need to go and change. I, I want to change my Spieth win prediction. To zero? Uh, uh, actually. Well, let me hear the change. What change are you trying to propose? I'll keep it at one. But I, I think he wins the open. And I'll tell you I'll tell you why. What's the philosophy? <laughs> Name a and now I guarantee you he doesn't win now because I've said this, but um this is probably the most like the least we've talked about him winning an open. Yeah. Um, well, well, I guess we'll see when we get there, but as of right now, yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. I don't think 17 under is too much on a links course for him. No, we could get there. Mm. And I think by then, I just, I don't think he needs to have the putting to win there. I don't disagree. He seems to be able to always find a score it opens. Like even this year, like he obviously, like he wasn't in the picture, but he still finished at what, 14, 15 under? Yeah, he's, he's just so good at those courses. It's not, it's not as Mickey as St. Andrews. Um, yeah. Well, I guess the other thought, you brought up the putting. Um, but, like, do we still think that's going to be the issue this year? Seems like with him, it's whack-a-mole, right? Something goes well, the other things fall apart. But I don't know. Like, do you think it's going to – everything's just kind of going to level out and he's going to be the 20th best player just kind of across the board and everything will be solid? Or are we going to have some sort of extremes in the game? So that's why I only have him winning once. Let me just – so if I look at his numbers from 2022, just like the strokes gain baseline numbers, I, he won't putt worse. I think we can all agree on that. There's no way yeah, he's going to put worse. Not possible to do hey, that. Uh, oh. 
off the tee, he was at half a stroke. I think he'll probably be a little bit worse this year. Yeah. Um, around the green, he's consistent. He's consistent, like the point three, point four range approach. I think it's just going to come down. I mean, this is golf. This is why Tiger won fifteen majors. How good is the approach? How good is he going to hit his irons and wedges? Yeah. Like that's such a bland thing to say, but this is like a reason why he won't win at LACC or he won't win at the PGA. His long irons suck. He fails to hit greens, and he will the two hundred plus yard par threes. He will find ways to make bogeys on, and that's typically how he doesn't shoot great scores. Um, like I can't wait till we get to the Genesis Scottish Open, and he plays the eighteenth hole in plus three out of four rounds. <laughs> like that's why he's no longer like like Bob and I have talked about this a ton, and I'm sure I've talked to you, Dan. He doesn't play the part hole as well. We'll get to Augusta. He'll play eleven it's, and plus three. It's, it's the biggest thing that me and George, I mean, it's, it's, it's so obvious that, I mean, he refuses to make pars on hard par fours. Yeah. <laughs> like it's harder for him to make a par on a hard par four than this to make a birdie on an easy par four. <laughs> I mean, and, that's the case. Like I'm looking at it right now. Um, and, I, and I don't know the reason, but I just because he's just not a very good long iron player. I think it's as simple as that. And that used to be what he had. Remember when that was the only thing left? Yeah, that was that was for a while the only. That thing. was the only thing left. It's weird too. I wonder though, like remember last the... year at the, uh, no, it was like two years ago at the Houston. Ta- no, it might have been at Valero. When like he was sticking them like ten feet, like six irons, and we were like. That's all we got. <laughs> Those are good times. I uh I do wonder though if part of the sort of hard hole poor playing is just I mean the long irons aren't great. Yeah, I I think part of it's great. Just I like think it's much. Yeah. Part of well, but if you can't yeah, if, the putters, yeah. if you can't bail yourself out with like a 12 footer every now and again, you're just not gonna play hard holes very and well. And if you can it if you miss the green, you're most likely going to have a five footer. And if you can't make those five footers, right, it comes like, down to that too. Yeah, it's got to be part of it, I'd imagine. But it'll be an interesting to see. I mean, Kapalu is right around the corner. It's weird, <laughs> but I'm like kind of excited for it. I don't. Think... I, I expect like a 2021 year. I just don't know how many wins that'll translate into. I think he'll be better than he was. Like we've been very negative this podcast. I think he'll be better than he was in 2022. But will it translate into more than one win? And by better, you mean more consistent. More consistent. Um, he's not gonna putt worse. We've yeah. already started to see some of the improvements in his putting in the fall. Like he played poorly in the fall events. Yeah, like Bob alluded to, we've seen some good putting. It ain't gonna get worse. It's just will he convert it into more than one win? And I mean that's what is going to make these next eight months a lot of fun? Mm-hmm. What was that? Couldn't, couldn't have said it any better. I've uh, got a couple, couple like quick little fun questions. Who's a um, underrated player that will have a good year this year? Like win more underrated. than one time, maybe two times. Somebody that's just kind of out of the blue. Dang, that's a good question. That is a tough question. I really (sighs) underrated player. Yeah, somebody who's just like not one of the like. (laughs) Such a good question. It really is. Excuse me. I I can't even like. (sighs) Like I'm looking at major leaderboards to see like what little names were. Excuse me, we're up there. And I'm, I'm looking at the gut. open, and it's a bunch of studs. I'm thinking, yeah. oh my god! I think Adam Svensson's a baller, and he's gonna have a good year. I can, I can get with that. I like that. I, I kind of like Min Woo Lee. Huh. That dude, that dude's around at Augusta, like weirdly around. Like he's three back on Saturday on the back nine around. It's weird. He's creeping, but he's there. He's lurking, and it's yeah. like, hmm. Maybe that guy figures it out one time. So I'm gonna go Min Woo Lee. Fair. Um, God dang it! I wish I had a name. 
it's tough. Just... I, I put you guys on the spot, but it's very difficult. Um, ooh, I know who I'll go with. This is just off the top of my head because I bet on him a lot and go get that points. What we did, Aaron Rye. Okay, I don't know <laughs> that. Um, two gloves, right? I think it's two gloves and iron covers. <laughs> yes, Mr. <laughs> iron covers. Like, a good year. like, he had a good year, he had like. What ten top twenty fives? Like he could yeah. be a yeah. guy that maybe snags a win. It wouldn't shock me. No, you liked him a lot. He was your top forty play quite a bit. Yeah, like that's what he does. Like he's Aaron <laughs> Rye, man. I uh, <laughs> that's a good one. All right, no, flip it. A good player, elite player that you think is gonna not have a good year. Could be zero wins. Could just be missing the FedEx. Could be something like that. I can start because I, I was thinking about this. You know what's funny? I was going to say Cam Smith. Ooh. Like, I think he'll, like, you can't even say him now because he's on another tour and they play like six times. Yeah. So, like, I can't even say him. <laughs> I just, yeah. You think, the, you think the heater is over for Cam Smith? Um, correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go Cantlay. I feel like he's won a lot recently, and that just is going to change. Like, Patrick Cantlay has gotten a lot of bounces these past couple of years, a lot of kind of lucky draw. And obviously he's playing well because he wins. But I kind of think he has a decent year but doesn't win. And I I don't know how I feel about that, although I do know, but I'm just not going to share. Um and I, I kind of think Cantlay doesn't win this year. I have he just won the century, and that would be the end of my. I feel like my answer is very on brand for me, um, but I think uh, Rory. That's fair. I like because depending on the context. He, yeah, he played so well towards the end of the year. I just don't think you can. Yeah. Could he I... win? Yeah, but I think he goes back to his random, like, not great form, picks off a win at, like, the Mexico. Yeah. The the other thing about Rory, too, he putted amazing. Yeah. So well. Like, yeah. that. And his wedges. Yeah. It's just, Which were his weakness his entire career. We'll see. Yeah, that's not a bad play. I thought you were going to say JT, but. <laughs> well, JT technically had a bad year last year, but he was better. Yeah, JT wouldn't oh. even fit. That's true. JT, had, yeah, he only won the PGA, and he should not have won the PGA. And he should not have won, yeah. Now, statistically, like, Justin Thomas is kind of due this year, in theory. Due to have a bad year or due to no, win? No, due, due to have, like, two to three wins type of year. Oh. See, I'd take that for speed in a heartbeat. You know what? I'm actually – so I said – um, I said I – I said Cam Smith, and then who was the other guy I said? I can't even remember. I don't know if you said another guy. Oh, so – this is actually so contradicting of what I said earlier. I have Homo winning a major, but at the same time, Homo's like career year was last year. I know he won the Genesis the year before, but it's very possible that, he goes back to being a average Joe. I don't think he does. I think he continues to be a really solid player on tour. That's fair. I mean, he won twice last year. I don't know if he'll win twice again. He might only win once, but yeah. But like, I think he will. I'm trying to think of someone to compare him to is the only thing. Um, do you guys have any comparisons for Max Homa? He's he's interesting, man, because he really struggled, right? Yeah, and he was he kind of down, broke through recently. Yeah, like sort of an older there. age. Um, I have another like, superlative. Mm, let's hear comeback it. player of the year. Mm. I mean, there's there's not too many guys, I guess, you could pick for a comeback, but like guy who had. Um, like I mean, a Woodland, a Ricky, or a Woods. Harris English, or Woods, yeah, Woods. <laughs> I I think I mean Harris English is probably the easy pick. Yeah, mm. I'll go about Woodland. I will take Flower, Ricky. 
Yes, because he's got a new coach. I think that the vibes are different. Mm-hmm. He played decent at the um end of the season. Yeah. I think <laughs> I think he gets a win this year. See, the thing with Ricky though is like he's got rid of the Tillery block, but can he not have the harm in the hook occur? <laughs> <laughs> For my comeback, it's the easy choice, Colin. Um, um I, it's kind of cheating, but like he his oh. he had a really bad year last year. I guess yeah. well for him, like he didn't win, but I mean he had like what am I looking at here? Ten top tens, but for him, like it was a really bad year. He didn't yeah. win. That's a good one. I I kind of have a weird feeling Matt Kuchar's gonna win. <laughs> I don't know where. Kuchar had a major please. He's just gonna get it. Be down. hilarious. Um. I think our boy Strebel win. Can almost lock that up. Um, I don't know where, but he's just gonna do it. What if Kucher beats Spieth at Oak Hill in the playoff? <laughs> That'd be so I funny. mean that would be that would be the end of my life. That'd be so funny. You can't come um, back from that. That's worse than two and four masters, I feel like. Yeah. But it's a Kucher, like it's the opposite of Burkdale. Kucher makes like a 30 footer to win and hits the fist. Bump if you're not a speed fan, though, that would be chills. <laughs> Just says go get that too. It's like go get Dude, that. he points to his caddy freaking points. Oh, no, he points God. to he points to Speeth and tells him to go pick it up. It would be crazy. Wow. But man. All right, that's okay. not happening though. That's <laughs> no, it's not. We can unless we speak it into existence. But I, mean, I don't even know if Kucher is even in the field. I mean, I guess he can. He loves the Sony Open. I assume he'll be there. Yeah, he'll be at uh the match play too if he qualifies. If he's just yeah, he won't though. I don't think, right? Maybe. Do we think Kisner wins this year? I mean, it's tough to bet against him at the Travelers or match play, but besides that, I don't think he touches anything close. I'll yeah. say no. I mean, his are so tough because he's like, what are there like six courses? Yeah, he has two chances. Or he wins. <laughs> two chances. Win them. Uh, he win. That's the thing. He wins like every other year. And he didn't I, win. I mean, year. it's tough to bet against him with the match play, man. I mean, he, every year he just proves more, more and more people wrong. So I'm going to go with – I'll go with no just because that's the easy answer. But, like, I wouldn't be surprised if he wins the match play, Travelers, or Wyndham. If he wins anything else, I'd be shocked. Yeah. Shocked. This is your man. How many tour wins does he have? I think he's, got like, he's got to have, like, eight. I think it's, like, four. No, he's got to have like six, seven. He has four PGA Tour wins, a European Tour, a couple web.com, but only four PGA Tour wins. That's surprising because he has a green briar. Well, because he spreads them out. He wins like literally every other year. He has the RSM in 15, the Schwab in 17, the Mass Play in 19, and the Wyndham in 2021. So he's due this year. So really, I guess we should be saying yes. It's crazy too. Like we talk about him being a killer. You know he's one in five in playoffs. And the one when he won was like an eight man. Yeah, yeah he won the window where he beat five guys. Well, and he should have lost too, because Adam Scott missed like a four footer on the first hole. Oh yeah. He was in the playoff with Ricky. Wow. That was sick though. That was so sick. Dang. Oh, at, at the players. Yeah. Wow. Kids could have a players. That's crazy. Maybe it's this year at the players. Like, that's a – I mean – It's possible, but he's also, like – It was in May, too. That's true. Like, March – and March, it just plays longer, you know? Yeah. And it means more to Shoffley. Kisner and Shreb were both at a playoff together at the Greenbrier. Yeah. I mean, if we were following back then, well, I guess, I mean, seven years ago, we would have had two dogs in that fight, and they both lost. Yeah. Speaking of the Wyndham for one second, sorry. I know we're we're completely off topic here per usual. Roger Sloan was in that playoff. Wow. Whatever happened to that guy? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Roger, Roger Sloan Sloan like, really? fell off the map. Dude was in a playoff and like man, that's a tough scene. <laughs> I think he lost his card. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he's the last three events were Corn Fairy events. That yeah. was brutal. Golf is hard. That's yeah. a tough scene for Sloan. Yeah. <laughs> One more. 
I don't know if you guys have any other. No, no, no I'm, I have nothing else. But I've got, I've got kind of a, a fun one. Yes. Thursday at Augusta. Oh, man. Don't do this to me. Maria Olazabal. <laughs> Does he make a birdie before he makes a bogey? No chance. No chance. Because he's going to be off early, and he's going to play the first hole. He's going to hit the drive like 240. Have 200 in. He's making a 5-1. I, I, I believe. I'm going to say he's 200 through 3 this year. Two under through three. Yeah, birdies, birdies. Two and three. three. I mean, if he pars one, like I love one. We'll get to Augusta talk about Augusta, but one's such a good hole. Yeah. And then um, John Daly at the PGA birdie before a bogey or or no? Birdie before a bogey. No, but maybe at the open I could see a birdie before a bogey. That I, I could see. We have to... He nearly made the cut at St. Andrews. We should we should do a bet on that when the week comes around. When it comes around, yeah, we'll have to. Just say right, it well, also be really crazy it. hard. Yeah. Well, and I guess it depends. Like, I don't know. If Oak Hill is like starts on a par five, then maybe Mr. Daly gets that early birdie. But who knows? We'll see. Just some just some thoughts I had. I would love to see Olazabel. Yeah, Plus something in the the low seventies on day one. <laughs> it's fair enough. No, it's more than fair. I, I, you know, I just want them to get into Craig Ranch as well and <laughs> play there, but that'd be awesome. Thanks, Dad. And Olazabal just tearing up the Byron Nelson. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Um. Do we have anything there. else? <laughs> I don't. Think so. We've we've really. Um... Yeah, this was a fun podcast. Though, like. The schedule is fun to talk about. The superlatives, which was all Dan's idea. I give him a little round of applause for that. Those were fun. They made us think a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, a new. I mean, the season started in the fall. But, again, Jordan doesn't play well in those events, so it really starts now. And it'll be eight months of podcasting and hopefully contention and 